So can you just talk about exactly what omega-3 and omega-6 oils are? You know, they're, they're both essential. They're essential um, fatty acids that we need in our diets, but we, need, we don't need them in high quantities, do we? Can you just talk a little bit about that and, we can, and then we can get on to how, they, how the omega-6s cause damage perhaps? Yeah, sure. So, um, so the polyunsaturated, okay, so fats are broken down into saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, and polyunsaturated fat. And um, if you take a typical steak, for example, 47% of that steak is going to be saturated fat. And another, you know, roughly uh, 50 some percent of that steak is going to be monounsaturated fat. And then the rest is gonna be polyunsaturated fat. And uh, polyunsaturated fat is primarily um, omega-6 and omega-3. And just to keep with the big picture here, I won't get into the nitty gritty details. So omega-6s, well, 80% of the omega-6 is one, uh, fatty acid called linoleic acid or LA. Um, and that accounts for about 80% of the omega-6. And then you have omega-3 fatty acids and um, the primary one of those would be alpha linolenic acid or ALA. Um, and let me just tell you that oh, these are both essential fatty acids. We have to get these in our diet. And if you eat any kind of food at all, you will get them. <laughs> it almost doesn't matter, you know, because they're in all plant sources and they're in all animals because plants make them and animals eat plants or they eat other animals. And no matter what you eat, you're going to get some, almost, you're going to get some omega, uh, omega-6 and you're going to get omega-3. Now, let me tell you how much we really need so if we go back to the American diet, so we studied this and we, I calculated this, that our uh, estimated omega-6 consumption in 1865, Susan, before we had any seed oils in our diet, our omega-6 consumption I calculated as 2.2 grams. Now our omega-3 was probably about half of that uh, something like, you know, a half a gram or three quarters of a gram, maybe somewhere in that range. Now, what happened was, is seed oils for, you know, most of the seed oils range from 30 to 60 some or 70 some percent omega-6. For example, soybean oil is about 55% omega-6 linoleic acid. So before we had seed oils, we didn't have anything that would have anywhere even close to that potential consumption of omega-6. I mean, if you ate a grass-fed cow, um, you're gonna get, that cow would have roughly 2% of its fat would be omega-6, roughly, probably more like one and a half. So that would, you know, in, in all of its fat, that's, about, that's what it would have. Whereas, you know, compare that to a seed oil like soybean oil, where you get 55% linoleic acid, omega-6. So anyway, so, so today, let me just jump forward to today. In 2008, Americans are getting 29 grams of omega-6 per day. And we store these omega-6s in our fat and in our membranes and in our tissues. And they create um, a, 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 an oxidation cascade and just basically this just lights us on fire with you know inflammation oxidation and toxicity and we can go into that if we have any time i know we're you know, getting close but anyway all so those things together what we do our body is not meant to burn these omega-6s for fuel they were meant to be stored because we were meant to get them in tiny tiny amounts from things like an, you know animal meats and fats and butter and eggs, and they would all be incredibly low amounts, and we would store these, and they'd be used where they're needed, like in our mitochondria, but now we're just storing them in our fat, and they just ultimately cause disaster. They drive obesity, um, 
virtually, you name any chronic disease and they have high levels of omega-6 in their fats. That's, you know, that's kind of uh, the, the, the bottom line. So we're not supposed to store these in our sort of fat cells, are we? They're, they're sp- they're, they make up our cell membranes and they're involved in sort of, you know, mitochondrial function and things like that. But we're not actually supposed to store them in our fat cells. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's, that's correct. Well, I think we would store them there maybe at the same level that we would... Um, in, you know, where they're needed. I mean, you'd have a tiny little reservoir is what you you should have, supposedly, you know, the, and then you could ex- pull those from your fat cells and put them into your mitochondria where they're needed, for example. Um, but instead, you know, I, uh, one of the most powerful pieces of information that I, uh, that I finally came across that I, I did talk about at Low Carb Denver was the fact that the, the population of Tukacenta, Papua New Guinea, um, it, back in the 70s, they, um, they, and they were consuming, um, their diet was almost exclusively sweet potatoes. And um, so they were consuming about, I think it was about 0.6 or 0.7% omega-6 linoleic acid. And in their fat, um, it was, uh, their, their fat was 3.8% linoleic acid. Um, and compare that to Americans in 1959 was 9.1%. And by 2008, we were at 21.5% omega-6 linoleic acid in our fat stores, in our adipose fat, you know, on our bodies. 21 and a half percent compared to, um, you know, the population uh, in uh, Tukacenta, I believe it was. And we're not able to burn these fats for fuel, are we? It's a good question. I mean, I, 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 I believe that we can burn them for fuel, but because we weren't, we weren't designed to. No, I think we were, we were designed for them to be um, signaling molecules and to play this structural role in our mitochondria where they're so critical to the health of the mitochondria. But the, but the incredible thing is that if, when you eat a lot of um, omega-6 linoleic acid, the, it destroys the linoleic acid in your mitochondria where it's needed. And so, for example, these studies that show people, you know, these animals that consumed a high omega-6 diet, the the omega-6 in their mitochondria in this uh, molecule called cardiolipin, um, it dropped to, I believe it was one, uh, it was either one-fifth or one-tenth of what it was in the low omega-6 diet. But anyway, it's, so this is devastating to the mitochondrial function and it, and it results in failure of the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, whereas we're, which is where 90% of our energy is produced. Mm-hmm. And so when that happens, you have mitochondrial uh, dysfunction, mitochondrial failure, energy failure. And then when you get energy failure, cells start falling apart. And when that happens, I mean, the, the first thing that happens, they get insulin resistant They start spewing out reactive oxygen species, which drives this whole oxidation cascade. Um, The energy failure results in mutations in the DNA, which leads to cancers, and the cells begin to undergo apoptosis, cell death, and that leads to diseases like macular degeneration and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And the energy failure leads to congestive heart failure. I, I mean, it's just, Everywhere you look, yeah. it's a disaster. It's just, you just see widespread disaster coming from these seed oils. 